Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second day of BPF track at Linux Plumbers Conference. And uh, we are starting with the BPF time presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I'm excited to talk about our latest project, BPF time, our user space, eBPF runtime. Uh, my name is Yu Sheng. I'm currently working on some open source projects related to eBPF. This is the first time I've spoken at Linux Plumbers. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, so, uh, this is the topic we are going to decide about today. I will start with a brief introduction uh, to why we need a new EP, use space eBPF runtime. There may be kernel U performance issues, kernel eBPF security concerns, and limited configurable. <laughs> and are use space eBPF runtime limitations? And after that, I will start to introduce to our eBPF, BPF time and talk about how it works and some examples and benchmarks and our roadmap. Let's start it with why we felt need to create a use-based eBPF runtime. Your probe is solved for use-based dynamic tracing. Uh, however, the kernel eBPF your probe has some performance issues. It's attached to the U probe is attached to a use space function and run eBPF program, which when a function is executed, is widely used in production, like uh, tracing the SSLRTLS HTT2 proto protos and, and monitor the memory allocation or tracing batch scripts and like Python scripts yesterday. Uh, we've seen performance issues with kernel U probe and the uh, Current implementation requires two kernel context switches, uh, lit lit significant overhead. The, the U probe is like uh, tenfold overhead than a kernel U probe, okay, than a kernel K probe. Also, the kernel trace points will, will hook all six cores and require filter for specific process, which is not very flexible. And also there might be some security concerns or configuration. <laughs> Running eBPF in kernel requires root access and this will introduce a more larger attack service. This trial shows a lot of CVEs from recent years. <laughs> This is because the verifier, which is supposed to be the gate picker, ensuring only safe eBPI program running uh, is actually where the most CVE were found. <laughs> and we also talk about the configuration. This is uh, the verifier restricts the eBPI operations quite a bit uh, if we want to make a more complex logical in the EBPI code, like make it ring complete or uh, Extend some helper mode or new features. We need to recompile the kernel and redeploy it. <laughs> there are some current EBP, your space eBPF runtime, like the UBPF, RBPF, and also some, but they, they can't quite keep up with all the workloads we want to do. Like uh, maybe we can have some new space observability, like the your probably just mentioned, and some new space network, new space configuration plugins and filters. This typically we may use like a web assembly. However, uh, despite the your probably has something like Git helpers and simple hash maps and like ELF passing, they still need a complex integration and usage. They can now use kernel eBPF loaders and tool trends like libbpf and clan. <laughs> There's no attached support. You cannot dynamically attach to any running process. They cannot uh, attach 
to this cause and, and use space functions. Uh, and there's no no inter process maps or kernel maps support. They cannot access like maps in kernel. So that's it's limited functional in use space. Uh, there are also some, it's seeing no kernel eBPF use cases like the QMU and eBPF, like the, you can combine use based eBPF with DPDK and use for smart contracts. And your BPF is also for EBP, eBPF for Windows. They can bring eBPF to transcend runtime to kern, Windows kernel. Uh, there are also some papers related to use based eBPF. For example, uh, the Ruby patch which is about quick fix or for firmware in real time systems <laughs> and some the thermal containers which uh, are about making tiny efficient visual space for IoT device. <laughs> so putting all together we can go something some use cases like networks, plugins and like each computing or smart contracts. They can also be used in other systems. So here comes, let's talk about our BPF time, our use-based eBPF runtime. Um, with use-based eBPF runtime, you, our use-based eBPF runtime uProb can be up to 10 times faster than traditional kernel uProb. And not just like general uProb, you don't need to do any manual instruction instrumentation or restart the process. They can trace the user based function, syscalls, or modify user space user function behavior. BPF time is also compatible with kernel eBPF tool trends and libraries. So there's no need to modify the eBPF applications, then you can just run in your space. <clears throat> there are also some uh, inter-process map supports or kernel map supports. <laughs> they can we work together with kernel eBPF, so maybe we can offload the kernel eBPF to your space, your kernel verifier to verify it. We also bring a new LLVM JIT compiler to eBPF. Uh, this is the feature we currently support in your space eBPF runtime or BPF time. Uh, we can support a large number of share memory maps they are entirely in your space and some maps we can interact with kernel like a perf event we can send the send events from the tracing target process to the tracer and we can also send, <laughs> submit the event back to the kernel and kernel will submit them to the tracing tools like the bcc tools <laughs> We can also dynamically attach to the program types in user space. They are mostly about the syscalls and uprob. You can also define other steady trace points and program times in user space applications easily. There's like 22 helper support we can now implement in user space and we can support using a kernel verifier or another state along user space verifier. Uh, there's two modes for BPF time. The first thing is we can run eBPF completely in your space. They can even maybe they can even run without a kernel and on some non-linear Unix systems. Uh, however, it's not very suitable for large tracing program because they may need a mix of kernel KProb and your space uProb because the maps in shared memory can only be used by use-based eBPI programs. It cannot be used by kernel eBPI programs. <laughs> so we're introducing another approach. We may write, run eBPI in use-based with kernel eBPI. We'll introduce a new eBPI demo. It's similar to the fields. Mm, it's it's, it, it can be compatible with kernel uprob in behavior. It can attach to new process or running process automatically and support a mix of uprob and kprob. Uh, 
they don't need to modify the kernel. We use uh, like EBPF module to monitor or change the behavior of EBPF syscalls. Uh, this is some basic examples <laughs> to use the to use the uprop to monitor your space uh, mlock function in libc this is uh, this example can be working in kernel and working in your space or particularly working in kernel and your space uh, so you can use a bpi time load to load the uh, ebpi programs and start tracing with another uh, running process. You can also dynamically inject or attach the EBPI program to a running process. And then you can see the output is similar to what a kernel does. And you can also start running a BPI demo and you can just use the mlock like <laughs> work what's used with kernel, kernel your product, you can just uh, run it and load it to the kernel and the demo will automatically load it to your, extract it to your space and you can trace in the target process. So let's discuss how BPI time is working like running the first mode is running EBPF in your space only. This is our original kernel EBPF design. It requires a compiled EBPF program from source use its skin EBPF tool trans to compare the bad code and like using a just based library to load into the kernel with the verifier or kit they can attach to events. Uh, the your prop is attached to use based applications, use based functions, but it will require a uh, context switches when the uh, when a target process running into these functions, uh, you are trapped into a kernel. SQL the EBPI programs and return to your space. This is where the overhead of, often comes. This is where BPI time completely working in your space. Uh, uh, this is similar to uh, the original kernel EBPF, there's no change to it. Uh, but we modify the BPF syscall to a function call and use a library to interact with the syscall use space library executed and then we will load the programs and maps to a shared memory and we can verify with the use space verifier and should compile the BPI program and running another pro process you can use the, like tools to inject the run this is a shared library you can use some tools to inject the shared library into the target process then it can attach to the functions or syscalls via binary rewriting. Uh, this is how the injection works. We can support two types of injection runtimes. Runtime is a shared library for running process, so we don't need to stop or restart the process. We can just inject the library into the running process via the p-trace approach. This is similar to fry data, and we use the towards Flyda provides, and we can also study to tracing at the beginning of the new process. We can use load preload to LD preload to load the shared library when the process is running. Uh, this is our trample lines. We, we use the inline hook is based on Flyda gym and the Cisco hook is on based on zipline or other Cisco hook approaches. They can, they can also be easily extend to new trample line methods. The inline hook is to modify the start of a function and when the, when the control flow reaches the start of function, start of a target function can be branched to our tracing programs. And when our tracing programs finish, they were branched to 
the original process function. The second mode is we can run in GPF use space working with kernel. Uh, we will introduce another BPF diamond to they will inject a BPF kernel code, kernel module writing eBPF. Uh, they can change the behavior of this code via the BPF probe write user and also modify, uh, monitor the BPF programs and monitor the uprob events and uh, doing the attach process in your space. They can also they can like unload the program to your space and uh, running it with uh, target BPF time agent. Then you can use map map or ring buffer to interact with eBPF maps. Uh, there should be no syscalls in this point. If we use syscalls to uh, interact between the kernels and your space, <laughs> you will be very slow and there's no need to change the your prop to the your space. This is the attach point overhead. We can see the your prop has the kernel your prop has 10 times overhead than the use space your prop. And however, our use, use space this causing hooks introduce a slight, slightly more overhead. And okay, you can also define some steady trace points and embed runtime in use space applications. You will result, resulted on similar overhead like the kernel syscall trace points. We also did a simple, simple benchmark for JIT, like micro benchmark compare, compare uh, eBPF runtime and WebAssembly runtime with some is is with some small cases. LVMG can be the fastest. Uh, the lower, the lower. Uh, this is for a time the lower the bar is, the performance is better. So from left to right, it's like your prop, your BPF, RBPF, or BPF time, and like WebAssembly and native. If WebAssembly, if LLVM JIT is heavy to deploy, it, we are also developing a, like a half time compiler for LLVM JIT. We also evaluate our eBPF time on some existing eBPF use cases. They can be run directly without any modification or with some minor fix. We have tests with some BCC tools like BPI trace and eBPI exporters. They can trace use space functions or like syscalls. And we can also evaluate with a different, uh, more complex application those for observability. Uh, this is a BPF trace. Uh, this is a BC tools. Uh, with our BPF time, we are able to run the tools from the Cisco interface applications, libraries, and runtimes. We have put some tools related to it. It's from the top half of the picture, like an entirely running new space. We have also put in test some like the uh, BPF trace and Prometheus exporters for let me run right as expected or the BPF requires some minor fix. We also test about the performance of uh, SSLS Smith. It's a BCG tool to capture the SSL data. I encrypt the data in your space. It's widely used in production for observability. Uh, compared to no SSL interception, the kernel will reduce the request second by like six, uh, nearly 60%. And our use space is SSL Smith for only reduce like 12%. Uh, we test it with the uh, engines and work. The higher is better. Yeah. The, 
the blue is the original, the origin, orange one is the kernel, and the green one is the use base. We also test with the uh, complete observability workload, like the deep flow agent is deployed in production, and I publish like a paper. And the U probing LT observability may be slow, so the kernel here we enable all features in the deep flow, so the difference is not very strong, but we are thinking how to configure it. We are not very familiar with the flows, but we can run it without any modification. Uh, the usage your prob only re reduce the, if we, this is partly, partly in kernel and partly in your space, you can, if we move the kernel your prob to your space, you will, you will reduce, <laughs> The kernel will reduce like 20% and your space will reduce like 15%. Uh, this is because uh, they are also tracing like the syscall layer and socket and uh, a lot of k probes. So uh, we only move a small part of your probe functions to your space. Uh, the others remain the same in the kernel. Here is our low mass. <laughs> We are also sick about possibly new use cases like uh, net networking related EVP in use space because there are already someone using EVP related network space in those space like uh, GPDK, but there's no control plan for it. So you can you cannot use existing EVP to translate HDP or AF HDP for it. Like we are, maybe we can also be used with programmable use space network stats with existing EPPF network applications. We are also considering can we use like use space EPPF to spin other fields. We can install some filters in use space. Uh, they cannot li limit it to the tooling compute and uh, put a lot of logic inside the use, where use space EPPF. Uh, usually, EPPF can also be used like hot patch use based functions. Maybe. Um, there, are, there are some improvement, improvements we need to do, like doing more benchmarks and evaluation, because uh, this is a relatively young project. <laughs> we also want trying to see how to make it work better with kernel EPPF to, in, to improve its compatibility and include small maps and helper support with the kernel or in your space. We also need to optimize the performance for LMM chip and bring a LMM a half time compare for EPPF. Uh, we also need to consider security model of it to make sure the EPPF is not attacked in your space and bring some more tests and CI to it. There are some still some open problems because the BPF M map currently only works for areas. We use the main map to map the kernel kernel maps and just base maps so uh, to avoid Cisco overhead. So how to make a better performance cache maps between a kernel and those spaces still need to think about it and work in the future. Uh, can we use like, introduce like um, new hash maps types or implement a uh, batch hash maps based on the uh, array maps or uh, like let the kernel EPPI program assess the use base maps? Uh, we also need to think about error pro propagation. Uh, can use base kernel EPPI wait for the use base operations to load and attach the tag? Tagging process and can and also can we make the BPF time to another unprivileged <coughs> BPF runtime? So to summary, uh, use space your prob can be ten times faster than kernel your prob. The shared memory maps and it, it can have shared memory maps and dynamically inject into the running process and attach to the. Functions just like a kernel, 
kernel you probably is compatible with is seeing ABPR tool trans libraries and we can run existing applications on it on your space. It can also work together with kernel your EPPF like maps and others. So <coughs> Is there any questions? Hi, I have a couple Hi. of questions. Um, can you go back to slide 11 first? Okay. So I'm just wondering, uh, when you attach with DPF time, this is in pure user space, why do you need to use sudo for that? Uh, use like uh, command line tools? Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> Uh, look, the underly of it is uh, like a lot of preload, and we need to load the library to the. Okay, I can... we need to load the Cisco processing library to the use to the EBPF applications, and if we want to start the target process with the EBPF runtime, we can use the. Load preload to load it inside the target process, and you can also in, use like a ptrace to inject it into. Okay, I, I just think that uh, a tool for instrumenting user space and user space should not require root to do it. It's, it, it that's just my point. Yes, so thank you. Probably you could rework that part to to make it. I don't have to use root to to instrument my own process. So the, the second one is we can use a daemon to. Uh, control the kernel and load it automatically. Okay. Um, if you can go to uh, slide 15. So I see a line between the kernel verifier to the JIT compiler and user space. Why is the verifier of the kernel used for user space instrumentation? I personally wouldn't want to use the verifier made for the kernel when I want to instrument my own process. Uh, so this is why we use kernel verifier. Use kernel verifier is in this diagram because the kernel verifier is more completely complete and have more functionality than user-based verifier. The user-based verifier is an experimental project. Yeah, but it's made for the kernel to prevent, I guess, malicious programming BPF to start the, the to halt the kernel. Yes. While in user space. I want to instrument the process, I know what I'm doing. I shouldn't have to pass to a verifier made for another program. Uh, I know that you mentioned there's some user space verifier also. So yeah, uh, if I make that. So, so I've seen that in the code base, the, the verifier that you have in the user space code is MIT licensed and it's very, very simple. So I guess one of the reasons why you use the kernel verifier rather than copy it over to user space is because of GPL license, right? You cannot yes, use and this GPL project program. is MIT license. So so one thing you could do is to move it to a separate server process that would be GPL and would have the purpose of verifying the program. You could also do that rather than use a kernel. That would allow you to run the verifier in user space in its own address space, in its own program. Okay, thank you for the idea. There is a comment from Paul on the chat that pre is still behind in terms of future support. Uh, but there is also a question, another question on the chat. Uh, when you when you when you ran BPF conformant tests uh, with the LLVM jet, did you see any false positives? Uh, sorry, can you repeat it? Yeah. So okay. when you ran BPF conformance tests with uh, BPF time and all this, right? Did you yes. see any false positives? Uh, yes, with some positive positive like the. Uh, oh, atomic instructions and but there's less false positive than the RBPF and UBPF we are still facing it. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. Oh sorry. I have a few more but you can go ahead. Uh, well we are running out of time so let's let's give someone else a chance and then if you have time come back. There there's also more information in the back of it. If you if you want to take a look. So, Please. so I just wanted to ask about, um, so in the kernel, when you run, run the, the BPF programs, you have access to a bunch of helper functions and also maybe some K functs are becoming more and more useful for different use cases. 
do you sort of envision that the user space stuff will start to look at the symbols of the application and expose a lot of uh, functions from the user application to like, the BPF programs? Like the key functions? Yes. Yes, yeah. we, we have done we have done that, but uh, it's a slightly different from the uh, kernel F functions, but I think we can make compatible with kernel K functions. The original design of using this is like a FFI. They can call, call a uh, use space functions from inside the EBPI runtime. I have done this, but I, maybe I need to change this feature in the future to make compatible with kernel. Thank you. Thank Let's you do one more. Okay. Um, yeah. In your benchmark, you show that you have improvement of speeds for uh, the hit of the trace points. I would like to see benchmark for memory usage of injecting uh, the agent of BBF time into a process. Also, there's also the latency of in inserting trace points. If it's using a stop of the world approach, you basically have zero processing time of your process for a duration. This is important. Yes. So th these benchmark could be benefits to your tools. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your suggestions. This I'm going to do. I think this is necessary. We are running in the future. All right. We are running out of time. Thank you very much for the presentation. Okay, thank you. Exciting work. <laughs>